Welcome back to my dining room for another lockdown uh, photographic experiment and I'm back on the dining room table uh, and I'm going to try and photograph some water drops. You've probably seen it before. Uh, I've seen other people do it but uh, I thought I'd give it a go uh, and see how it works out. It's quite a simple setup but quite complicated to get the, 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 the drops so I'll talk you through the setup and uh, then show you what we're going. So Rosie's kind of, you can see my hands are free, Rosie's got the camera at the moment so if Rosie can turn around so we can see the, the gear. So I've got my camera set up, uh, 5D Mark IV with my macro lens. Uh, I've got two flashes, uh, a, 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 an arm with a clamp on the top, and then uh, I've got a remote release from the flashes. So when I fire um, the, the shutter on my camera, those two flashes uh, will fire as well. One pointing towards this bowl of water um, to illuminate the drops, hopefully, and the other just pointing. It's just a, a simple piece of A A4 uh, white paper folded behind to give me a, a white backdrop. Uh, I've got this white bowl out of the kitchen, filled it to the absolute brim uh, with water, uh, and then if if Rosie comes around this side a little bit, so um, I've got this. I think these are actually for for cooking, uh, for making cakes and whatnot. So it's a little syringe. So I can actually press the syringe and release drops uh, into, the, into the water. The challenge, back up to me please Rose, the challenge of getting the drops uh, is, is multiple. One is getting the timing right and I think, I think it's just going to be hit and miss. But the second is getting the focus because obviously my camera is looking across the bowl and there's nothing to focus on at the moment. So what I'm doing, I've got a chopstick again out of the kitchen, Rose. Rose, <laughs> got a chopstick out of the kitchen and just drop a drop in, see where the drop goes, put the chopstick in the water uh, where the drop was and then focus on the chopstick. So use manual focus, focus on the chopstick, set that and then hopefully don't touch anything um, and hopefully you get the drops right. Uh, and then I've got my wired shutter release. So this is one of those jobs where you've got quite a lot of things to do at the same time. So one hand I'm going to be releasing the shutter, the other hand I'm going to be releasing drops um, and, and hope for the best. Um, the water looks a little bit yellow, that's because we've got some yellow food dye uh, and mixed it up and we've do, been doing a bit of experiment. I've got about five or six different colours, so I'm doing yellow at the moment. Got the camera set, um, as I said I've, I've pre-focused, uh, I'm on uh, two hundredth of a second, so that's the uh, maximum speed I can get with this camera and, and flashes. That's the the maximum flash sync. Uh, check your camera instructions for what the maximum um, sync speed is. Uh, I'm on f11 uh, to give myself kind of a, a nice bit of depth of field, because uh, obviously uh, with a macro lens the depth of field is very narrow. So going f11, and then I've boosted the ISO. Uh, to 400 to get a bit more sensitivity on the sensor and then I've changed white balance to flash. So well, hopefully what will happen, drops fall in here, I'm shooting across, this flash lights up the drop, this flash lights up the background uh, and uh, hey presto it works. So we've been trying this a bit haven't we Rose and it's a bit of, of hit and miss so I'm going to show you how to do it. Uh, just going to be careful not to move anything um, because if you if you move stuff your focus will be out. So. Uh, you might see a bit of flashing now, but I'm going to go three, two, one, drops are coming. So as you can see, I took about seven shots there. Uh, I'm just going to look at the back of the camera. Um, yeah, some, some nice, some nice uh, kind of shapes, patterns. Uh, obviously, this <laughs> shapes, patterns. Uh, and uh, you know different splashes. What you what you do find is the very first drop, uh, the surface of the water is perfectly calm. So the first drop, um, the first exposure, you get a nice calm surface, uh, and and the drop. But then obviously if you take repeated shots, uh, you get in a, a disturbed surface. But actually I quite like that. And what I'm aiming for is just to see different patterns. The 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 ultimate is to try and get. Uh, a drop coming up and a drop coming down and colliding at the same time because you can sort of kind of get those poof uh, uh, kind of almost like explosions of uh, water droplets as it goes. 
So that's the setup. Um, and it, it, it's a bit of just trial and error. So doing that, uh, and I'm going to persevere. Uh, hopefully that's a kind of a quick explanation. I'm going to try some different colors. Uh, we, we did a bit of experimenting yesterday. And what you find if you have a contrasting color in the water and uh, in the syringe, you get a nice effect. So I might swap now because we've used the yellow and that water's turned yellow. So I might swap that to a darker color and try and get that contrast. But uh, <laughs> never done it before. Yesterday we tried a bit of experiments. First time I, I, I've ever done it. But I've tried to use as simple a simpler setup uh, as possible. You can buy apparently expensive equipment to control kind of the, the drop, but I'm just going to kind of do hit and miss and see, and see what happens. So hopefully they all work out. I'll, I'll post some images and uh, we'll see how it goes. So hopefully nice quick video about how to do water droplet photography. Thanks to Rose for uh, being my camera operator. Uh, any comments, any questions, any ideas of, of how to do it better, uh, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget the thumbs up and uh, don't forget to subscribe and see you next time. Cheers, bye.